right, so from John Deere to a Craftsman, um, just got a couple of very small things to work out with that John Deere um, before I send it on down the line. So that video series is done. We're getting to something that I'm really excited about working on, and it is this right here. I've never had a mower like this. I've had, I mean, I'll show you all the Craftsmans I've got here. My personal one is a gray craftsman that's in the lean-to over there. I won't show you that, but I've got these two green ones and that uh, that gray one there. That gray one, I never had a hood on it like that before come through here, but like the shifter with the floor and stuff. And I've had a hydrostatic, and I had one exactly like this a few years ago. But never had one like this. Let me give you the specs on it. And also, this is a keeper. <laughs> that one's not going anywhere, that little keychain thing it is a 42 inch cut 17 and a half horsepower Kohler Pro which is if you know Kohler's is the good one these motors are pretty good for what they are um, the oil in it is actually pretty decent doesn't smell like fuel and it's not full the crankcase isn't full of fuel which is good See, it looks like the fuel pump is kind of retired a little bit. Actually, that's, no, that's not right, because that's a fuel pump, and that's hooked. Oh, my. This is hooked to the crankcase ventilation system? Because the intake's over there, so <laughs> that is not right by any means. Or is it? Maybe it is, because there's the fuel. There's the fuel line. So I guess. Oh, I see what it is. I'm I'm a dummy now. So this is the fuel pump here. So it goes right here, and it doesn't go into the crankcase, silly. There's the fuel pump. I haven't. I've never worked on a Kohler with a fuel pump before, so that's something new, or that I've never had to work on the fuel pump for the motor. So the fuel pump, the fuel line, I think comes across. It's relatively not a complex system, but yeah, the fuel line comes across over here and actually goes down into the intake. Right there is where it comes across, and then it goes into the end, uh, the carburetor, right there. So that is kind of an interesting setup um, for the Kohler as opposed to the Briggs, where it's just like an external fuel pump, which I'm sure I can adapt this one to an external fuel pump as well, but. Hopefully it works. I mean, I was told that this mower works. Um, I got it, so it's a little complicated. So I sold this Craftsman, but I didn't de level the deck right. And so instead of me going to level the deck for I got a gray Craftsman that you may have saw in a couple of videos a while back. Um, she really liked the mower. And so in return for me fixing it, which all it needed was a battery and a rear tire tube, um, I had that one fixed in two hours, sent it back as a token of a thank you, or kind of as a let's make the trade deal, trade good. I got this craftsman back, but she let me keep this one. So I'm only in this thing about 40 to $50 right now, and I think it looks worse than it actually is. Um, she said it was running last year. The reason why they parked it was um, because, well, not because of that, but it was because of the deck spindle broke on the mower, she must have hit something very hard with it. I don't know if you can see it sitting down and lopsided. So I think it's going to need, or I know it's going to need a deck spindle. It'll need two rear tire tubes. It'll need a right or a left front tire tube. Um, steering seems good on it. It's in, after I wash it, it should be in pretty good cosmetic shape. It's even got the little brush guard bumper on it. So that's kind of nice too. Um, one unique thing about this LT1750, well, I haven't really ever seen these on a residential Craftsman, is it's got actually the electric PTO on it. So pop it out, should run the blades, pop it in, should turn them off. Um, they had robbed the starter solenoid to put it on the other mower that they had because they thought that was the issue when it was actually a loose positive cable. So this starter solenoid is good, I have been told. 
or so it should, so we think. Um, so I will need to put this back on, the starter solenoid. I think I might try a starter solenoid and a battery and then just try and crank this thing over and see if it runs. A little too late to do it tonight, but I wanted to give you an overview of what it looks like. Um, it does have the, I mean, this thing has all the options. It's like the, what would you call it, the Cadillac of uh, Craftsman Residential Lawn Tractors that are 42 inch. It's got the 12 gauge steel deck. I haven't checked the blades to see how good of shape they are in, but it doesn't have a deck spring on it. The blades are, the blades are trash, so I will have to put blades on it. I don't have the spring for the for the chute, so I will kind of figure out what I might do with that. Uh, it looks like they tried to screw it in and stuff like that at one point, which apparently didn't work. But anyways, a few small things to sort out, in my opinion. The deck spindle shouldn't be that big of a deal as long as I can get the um, bolts freed. So there's the overview. Um, next, I'm going to pop a battery in it, and I'm going to put this starter solenoid back on, which is not that difficult to do, which I actually don't know where it goes on this mower, because usually it goes, oh, it actually goes up here on this mower. You see a little bit of mouse droppings. Usually they go right here on the um, Craftsman's, and you can see where they usually bolt right there. But that's actually kind of easy. It goes up top here. So very easy to bolt in. Put your, two pos put your positive on one side. Put your positive on the other. Or your wire from the battery on one side. The wire to the starter on the other side. Pop in your um, safety wires, which are right here. And we'll pop the battery in it and see if we get ignition. Alright, so the battery that I got is good. It just has some corrosion on it, and so it wasn't initially firing. But now, I'll show y'all what we have. We have some turning. So let's see. I don't know if I'm going to turn it a little bit more. I don't know if I'm getting the fuel pump to prime. Then again, I don't know how much gas may or may not be in it. Also, I don't know how good the gas is either, honestly. So. It's got a decent amount in it. I do wish it would prime though. Maybe it will once we get it up there, but. So here's what I will do while we're here just so that we can hear it hit off, so to speak. Take this hood off while I'm at it. Actually, I think I, I, think I can get in here without needing to do that. There's a rusty little nut on that air filter. Wow. Let me find a pair of pliers real quick. Take that off. How about this? I'll take it off um, and then we will uh, spray some carb cleaner in it and see if we can at least get it to fire for us. Alright, got that rusty um, air filter nut off. I don't know what that is, but let's see what we got here. Alright. There's some sort of power wire there that's not plugged into something. 
Interesting. Again, I'll have to investigate a little bit more. But let's see if we can get it to kick over here. Hey, hey. How about that? So, we had to figure out why the fuel pump's not pumping gas. Could just be there's a bunch of crud in the gas tank, to be honest with you. But let's see. Oh, there we go. It's pumping a little bit of gas now. Let's see if uh, I don't want to run it very long because I think there's a little bit of crud and sun under the cover. A little surprise, so to speak. But. See if we can get enough gas up here to see if it'll stay running. Not yet. Hopefully this gas is okay. It looks okay. Let's try one more time. Or a couple more times here. I think if we can get it up here to prime, this thing will actually run pretty decent. Not the best squirter of. I'll try a couple more times here. Gosh, it runs good. <laughs> I'm not gonna run it long. Hey, hey, check that out. Like I said, I got a bunch of crap and stuff up under here, so I'm not gonna run it very long. But my gosh, that's awesome. Let's see if it'll fire back up. Awesome. I love these old Kohlers. Um, they seem to be really good motors all, all together. Um, I've heard terrible things about the Courage. But check that out, folks. We only just tried to piddle around with it a little bit tonight and ended up it's uh, <laughs> running. So let me show you all the date of this mower. I think it's around 2000-ish. Yep, I'm right on the money, actually. So, month, 9, 21, 2000. So, <clears throat> all right. So, here's what we know. It runs. I'll pump. I, I need to go to bed because I usually go to bed early because I wake up early during my work week. Um, I'm pump up the tires tomorrow. And we will, uh, oh, after I clean all the garbage and stuff out of the the hood there, and we will clean all of this goodness out, pump up the tires, and see what we have. Um, also got a couple other repairs as well that we're going to do uh, to it. And uh, we'll see what makes it into this video. So I had an inkling that this one was going to be kind of bad. So, let me show y'all what it looks like up under here. Oh, yeah. Quite a bit of uh, 
acorn action and nest action and all that good stuff going on right there so um now i mean this is why i did not want to run it as long or very, for very long because of this reason right here i actually might see if i can pull the front cover off which might be a little prove to be a little difficult there the way that exhaust bracket is what i need to do is i just need to clean everything out here so um that's uh, relatively boring stuff so i'll do that off camera um but while i'm in here i can check the fuel lines and i think i've got a little leak right here where it's coming down off of the um on the little short fuel line right there i'm gonna replace all the fuel lines on this uh, i'm not worried about that but um yeah so let me grab a um might just vacuum this stuff up, to be honest with you, just to try and get it out of the way and uh, clean it real good. And we'll get uh, we'll get going with it. You can just see all the crud and stuff on it as well. So I might might do all this and give it a good wash and uh, uh, things should be looking a lot better. Um, and then I'll work on getting the tire tubes in it uh, just because. It's gonna make it a lot easier to move around and also know this thing runs. I'll make sure that it dries as well and then I'll give it a good cleaning. So um, let me clean this up. We'll do a um, driving demonstration after I get the uh, engine cleaned out and the um, tires pumped up just temporarily here. All right, so I got it out. I got the tires pumped up, although this left front one is so bad that it has already leaked most of the air back out of it um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank it up put it in uh, disengage the hydrostatic um, lockout so I'm going to engage the transmission and then we're going to see if we can take it for a drive as long as it cranks again So yeah, it uh, I think because I, I, we've got a fuel leak right here. That's just a fuel line. I'm not really concerned about that. Didn't want to throttle up. I also don't have the air filter on it, so that probably has something to do with it too. Um, I'll probably pop it back on it whenever I wash the wash the mower, uh, so that it's not feeding in some so much dirt. Uh, this cover was it wasn't jacked up, but it was hitting because I didn't have it on. So. That's uh, a lot of the doing of that noise that you heard. However, we saw it ran, we saw it drive. So, 
Um, that's a good thing. Um, I might drive it up there. I think it'll make it up there just fine and uh, wash it out, especially wash up under the motor and stuff here. I'm just trying to get all the, the gunk and mess and stuff that's in there out of it. Um, and so what, that's what I'll do. I'll wash it and then I'll get back to y'all. Um, and we'll continue with uh, fixing this thing. All right, so I've gotten the rear tire tubes in because I've had them. I have them here. Um, I need to get a front one, so I'm gonna put that on order as well as this cable button, the spindle, and like I said, the two rear tire tubes are in and they're good now. Thankfully, I don't know what it is about tire tubes. They always give me the most trouble. Um, I put them in backwards for whatever reason and punctured one this time, so it's like, ugh. But um, it's going to happen. So, uh, like I said, I'm not worried about it. Um, I'll have to figure out a better solution to that right there as well. Um, don't quite know what I'm going to do with it yet. I might just bolt it down, to be honest with you. Um, because I don't have the spring mechanism or anything like that. Anyways, I'll end part one here. Part two, what I'll do is I'll wait to get the parts and stuff in. I do want to go ahead and put the um, fuel lines and stuff on. Um, it will most likely just be this line coming up to the um, fuel pump. Because this one, this one looks to be in pretty good shape. So it's not disintegrating or anything. So I'm going to do the one from the fuel filter to the fuel pump. Um, I've already done the one on the other side, so that one's good. Uh, let it dry, and I'll end part one here. Part two, we'll pick it up, pick it up, and uh, make this thing into a good running mower again. Um, it's going to be a nice one whenever, whenever I get it done. So stay tuned for the next one. If you uh, have any feedback, you like the mower. You ever seen one of these LT 1750s? Um, just let me know. I uh, love to hear comments, love to hear suggestions, and uh, other tips and tricks that uh, help make it more worthwhile, um, you know, to fix stuff like this. So, or make it easier for me. So, thank you all again for watching. I'll catch you on part two.